Welcome to a new edition of the Neon Jazz Interview Series with veteran jazz musician, composer, arranger, and conductor Ed Partika. He talked about his new 2022 LP, Last Dance. We caught up with him at his home base in Finland via Zoom to talk about this LP with the UMO Helsinki Jazz Orchestra. He opened up at length about this project, COVID life, and the future ahead. Dig the story. Hey, Ed, thank you for sending over the vinyl. I mean, it's very rare that I get vinyl. I had no idea that the box was for me. We had a snow day and everybody was home. And I kept walking around this box in the entryway and I was like, somebody got something down there. And they're like, that's you. That's your name. I got that out. It was the perfect day to listen to it. So I loved it, man. I really appreciate it. Oh, yeah, of course. Uh, I appreciate you listening to it, and I'm glad you liked it. You know, I'm, uh, you, know you never know about these things. Uh, when you're a musician creating music, you know, you have a feeling, but until actual real people listen to it and, you know, the feedback starts to come back, you, you know, you, you don't know how it's going to affect people. So uh, it, this album seems to be getting some pretty positive uh, response, so I'm very happy about that. So I guess the the idea, which right now, you know, we are starving for live music. I mean, this album is such a great representation of a, of a good, solid live feel. How does it feel for this to come out right now? I mean, with this pandemic's gone back and forth, and I think people really are ready to get out and see live music. So this album's probably very welcome for people to listen to. Yeah, I mean, as you mentioned, this, yeah, this is, I can agree with that wholeheartedly. You know, what we're, what we're noticing is whenever we get to a situation where we're starting to play for people again, people, yeah, they've been, they've missed it, you know, and it's uh, not only people, you know, the audience, pe- audience members have missed live music, we as performers have missed playing for people. Um, you know, we do live streams very often, some, you know, uh, without an audience, and you just do not get the, the connection, and you do not get the feel from a live audience. So it's it's also something that musicians that we need, you know, we need, we, you know, and, and as I mentioned before, you know, we're creating this music in a vacuum until actually, you know, music, uh, when music is created by people, and then it, other human beings listen to it, that's when the magic actually starts to occur. And, you know, in this case, on an album, this is, that's part of it. But even live, you know, there's even more magic happening. And, you know, and it is, yeah, it is something that both listeners and, and musicians have been missing, and we have been starved. So it's really great to, that we're, you know, that we're able to do this again. So uh, hopefully the pandemic will get to a point in time where, it re- where it's no longer a pandemic. But I remember, you know, talking about March and April last year, we were having these same conversations. You know, we were saying, oh, hey, you know, we just have to make it through February, and then in March and April it will be better. So let's hope that it's really going to be like that this year. Yeah, absolutely. It's hard to believe it's been two years. It's just, uh, what, what a strange time. Uh, so talk to me about the construction from an artistic standpoint of each of these tracks and kind of how it holistically came together. Well, you know, this was also a product of the pandemic. Uh, during the first lockdown, you know, I suddenly had more time to, to deeply uh, compose than I'd had in years before. So I was creating music, and actually the recording came about as well because we had to cancel some concerts, and suddenly we had studio time available. We had the orchestra who was on salary. We had the orchestra available, and I had this music um, and the music, you know, was originally, yeah, it was going to be written, it wasn't written for any real occasion, it was just, it happened because I had all of this time, so one of the positive things about the first lockdown, and so we started to record it, and it just turned out to be really beautiful, and I think, I guess another thing you could talk about is the fact that it's not really typical big band music, you know, as most people would be expecting. Um, a lot of it is quite melancholy. Um, a lot of it is chamber music-like, you know, some of the pieces, there are these moments of silence, of space, and, you know, so I think that was that also reflects uh, what was happening during the first lockdown, and some of the music was also written here in Helsinki, here in Finland, and if you've ever been up here to Helsinki, Finland, um, there's a lot of forests, and what I was doing during this first phase of the lockdown, I was out in the forest a lot, I was on my bike a lot, and I think that also, you know, sort of affected how the music turned out. You know, a lot of space, and definitely much more space and peacefulness than my music in the past has had. So that was really how, you know, what affected the music itself. 
and the title track, uh, Gigi's Last Dance, that was also, that came about through, well, the work process for, for the composition. Well, I've always been fascinated with George Gershwin as a composer, and I was looking at some of his less-known music, you know, because he's, he's, he wrote so many wonderful compositions, and, you know, a lot of them have become jazz standards, they're well-known, but he also wrote some gems that are not so well-known. And I was looking through a, a George Gershwin songbook, and I found this song called Just Another Rumba. I was really fascinated by it because it hadn't really been recorded very often. There was, there's been, there was like one notable recording of it, which was done by Ella Fitzgerald. And what I started to do is I started to take the piece, this composition, Just Another Rumba, started to take it apart and uh, sort of look for source material and some melodic ideas, some rhythmic ideas, some things that I could maybe turn into a recomposition or a composition of my own. And while I was doing that, I was reading a biography, of a George Gershwin biography, and it turns out that this composition that I was so fascinated with, Just Another Rumba, this was the very last composition that George Gershwin ever wrote. He wrote it shortly before his death, and so this all of a sudden this piece had even more meaning for me. So my composition sort of continued, and then, and then obviously then I had a, uh, more of a, an emotional place to put it, knowing that it was Gershwin's very last piece. And if you do listen to the Ella Fitzgerald recording of Just Another Rumba and Gigi's Last Dance, there's really nothing musically in common with both of these pieces, even though that was sort of the source material for my composition. But yeah, so and of course, then of course, Gigi, in this case, is George Gershwin, you know. So yeah, so that's where that came from. Yeah, I guess, yeah, that would be sort of the main big big thing that was happening during this lockdown when I wrote this music. So you had touched on it's not real until, you know, you get somebody that actually listens to this. So my question is, what do you hope those that buy or download this album get from this experience? I mean, I hope that they just find some music that maybe also touches them, you know, touches their uh, soul in some way, um, gives them uh, some sort of feeling of, of an emotion you know um, a lot of the music is melancholy it's could be conceived as being sad you know the uh, Iliani Elias composition Paranada um, when when I worked with her um, I said oh gosh that's such a sad song but she does not see this as a sad song she sees it as a, as a melancholy a beautiful yearning song and, you know, so that's the same thing, is maybe to find the beauty in these wonderful melodies, you know, especially Dienda from Kenny Kirkland, Paranata from Iliani, um, and maybe, yeah, hopefully to just let your emotions run. And maybe, maybe it will allow people to forget, you know, their everyday troubles in some way, you know. I mean, of course, everybody's struggling right now because of the pandemic and, uh, you know, all the other problems. So hopefully this music can give people a place to escape to for a few minutes or an hour. You know, the one thing about the pandemic is is it's kind of thrown, you know, everyone, but more specifically artists and musicians, into places where they've had to acquire new skills and figure things out that maybe weren't necessary before. How do you see yourself right now and as we move forward a stronger composer or musician than you were before this pandemic began? Um, I think the positive things, have, the positive effects have had more to do with the way that, uh, especially over here in Europe, the way that we're, we, we conceive of concerts. We, what we're doing right now is we're dealing with new concert formats. So, for example, instead of two sets of a concert that starts maybe at 8.30 at nine or 9 p.m., we are doing one-set concerts. 60 to 70 minutes without an intermission, um, and we're starting earlier. We're doing concerts at 5 p.m., 6 p.m., and this change, which was originally because of, you know, COVID restrictions, we've actually found out that for the musicians, for the people, you know, for us it's great because we don't have to uh, worry about 90, creating 90 minutes of music. We can create 60 minutes of music. Um, so we can con concentrate more on what we're doing. We can concentrate more on rehearsing the music to a very, very high level. For the audience, it's really great to just have a, a one-hour concert experience 
without an intermission, which sort of breaks up the energy, breaks up the flow. So that's part of the, you know, the thing that, that, that sort of changed in how I perceive writing music now. But this is also one of the things with the release of the LP. In the past, you know, I've always been sort of a believer in CDs. You know, I grew, you know I'm uh, 54 years old, so I grew up, and most of my career has been during the age of the CD. And filling a CD with 65 or 70 minutes of music, that really is, is a lot. And now going to the LP format, thinking about, hey, just, you know, 40 minutes of music, it's a great length, and so I think you can, uh, or me as an artist and a musician as a composer, I can concentrate much more and put much more energy into this, you know, this shorter length of music that I'm creating. So I think this is also a very positive thing. Not, you know, the LP uh, was popular before COVID happened, but now it seems to just be a perfect format for the times. You know, so those are definitely some things. Um, another positive thing was um, of really an acceleration of digitalization processes. You know, even this conversation right now, we're having it over Zoom. But before before COVID, I you know I never did any real any anything online like teaching or interviews. Um, and now you know, doing so much on Zoom, uh, video conferencing technology for teaching. Zoom is a wonderful tool uh, for teaching composition. You know, so also it's forced me to speed up some of the technological sides of my career, uh, get, you know, and really sort of get up to date on that. So, yeah, uh, to be honest, even though a lot of people have suffered, there's been a lot of negative things, there are a lot of positive things that hopefully we'll be able to learn coming out of this pandemic. So let's get the good word out there. How can fans out there pick up this music, download it, acquire it, kind of the sources between LP and digital, kind of let everybody know a little bit. Yeah, uh, the new uh, album, Last Dance, which features the Umo Helsinki Jazz Orchestra, is available on all streaming platforms. So uh, pick your, you know, so choose your favorite streaming platform from Spotify to Apple Music to everyone. It's available, of course, on Amazon, or you can order it directly from the record label, which is Neuklang, uh, Neuklang Records in Germany. So if you'd like to keep Jeff Bezos from having yet another yacht or something, you can order it directly from the, re from the record label. Mm. And, of course, on the UMO Helsinki Jazz Orchestra website, umo.fi for Finland, you can also order the album. Beautiful. Ed, thank you again for saying the music. It's wonderful, and it's so good to catch up with you again during this pandemic where hopefully things are getting better. We're seeing the other side, and things pick up for everybody. So I appreciate it. Yeah, thank you, Joe. I wish you all the very best. Have a great day. Thanks for listening and tuning in to another Neon Jazz interview where we give you a bit of insight into the finest players and composers in Finland, Chicago, Kansas City, and spots all over the world giving fans all that jazz. Thanks to Ed for his time, music, and story. If you want to hear more interviews, go to Famous Interviews with Joe Domino in the iTunes Store. Visit Neon Jazz at YouTube.com. And for everything Neon Jazz all the time, go to the neonjazz.blogspot.com. Until next time, enjoy the jazz, my friends. Neon Jazz.